So in this video, we are going over the first machine that I ever built for audio, which is uh, this is a slave computer that is made for uh, east-west play running inside Vienna Ensemble Pro. And this is part of a two machine setup. And this is the master. The master was actually upgraded later in the process, while the slave was actually downgraded in the process. So the master is running Logic Pro. And um, this is one of our latest projects, which was made for Italian television. And as you can see here, we have like 64 gigs of RAM in the system. And this was never changed. It was actually um, just lightly tuned in the, in the, during the years. And it's been uh, our, our limit for the machine. So we actually load a very huge template here so that we don't have to start all over every time. I think people that work with this know about that. And so we loaded, uh, we loaded everything we could. We got, we got the limit of the, of the slave machine concerning the, the RAM. And this is, uh, <coughs> here you can see the, the template working on the slave machine. We have all the, the microphones uh, positions open inside of the play library. And you can see here the, the number of instruments that are loaded. If I prepare a slide, the first one is on the one. Each one is obviously nine instruments. So I will load something like this is 150 like, instruments. This is like 200 and more. This is on the slave, I have 200 tracks. Uh, yeah, you here you know, also have you the can say, you some can say master. Have 200 instruments over there. And there's also a master in the end, so some little bit of uh, mastering and reverbs and stuff. Reverbs. And there's alt reverb. And yeah, so uh, I will go over some history of this. Uh, in I think in 2019, we tried to to build a single machine to do all the work. And we, we, we tried a different, some kind of different uh, setups with uh, Xeon and uh, i7 X series machines, uh, the X299 platform. And we found them to be like terribly performing uh, with, uh, with uh, trying to load all, all, the, all this template in a single machine that was not working. But more surprisingly, um, the X99 and X299 machine that we built were not working as slave machines at all. And of course, not even working as master machines with macOS. I mean, they were working, but they were dropping, uh, in, dropping um, voices a lot, even though the, on paper they were so much better. And so I recently did some, some downgrades on the slave because we were running an i7 6700K, 6700K on the, on the slave. And the first machine that we had as a master was actually like a, a very simple notebook with a dual core i5 Hackintosh notebook. And that was running pretty fine. We did some very huge templates on that. Of course, we were limited in the reverb and mastering section. We had to do that separately. separately. But the, the slave machine was running an i7 6700K. But I just decided to try to test, uh, to swap it for an i5, actually. We're running an i5 7 1500 and with some tuning of the RAM because uh, the RAM was running at 3200 CL14 with the i7 and that was turning out to be the most important thing because when we downgraded to the i5 uh, we had some um, some voices dropping and it turned out that the problem was the RAM speed because the i the i5 was running the, the RAM at a much lower speed but I was able to compensate that by lowering the latencies and so I got the I got even better performance with the i5 in the end after the after tuning the RAM. We did that using um, uh, the BIOS, of course, and then we did some testing using uh, those tools like uh, the OCCT uh, memory benchmark, and we made sure that the, the, the scores were like in, on par with the with the one with the i7 in the end by dropping the the latencies a lot while still running at. 2,400 megahertz, actually slightly more with a little overclock. And so the machine is uh, now tuned perfectly. And you can see the CPU load uh, is never, almost never exceeded 50, 
and we also try to like do a lot a lot of duplicates on the on the master trying to load uh, the project like three or four times and here you we can, can see, see that, that even though we we're, we're running higher cpu utilization we're not dropping voices as you can see the cpu load increase and you can see the the, the amount of tracks now is it's four times. Uh, you can see that the master is not doing that much, even though we are also running the the mastering. Now, after doubling the tracks, we saw we see some 100% load. After putting everything to 4x, and while this kind of project would be impossible on the X299 machine, on uh, on the master or the slave, so. Basically, CPU power is not that important. The RAM is the is the RAM speed, and of course, we're running out of three NVMe SSDs. With at the time we bought this machine and we built this machine, were very expensive. And and back then there was Intel NVMe drives, and the 950 Pro were the, the top the top dogs. And then there's like a, there's a SATA machine for the percussions, which are not as taxing. The master CPU is the 9700K, and we got that because it's the it's very it was very cheap, it's it was very cheap compared to the performance because it doesn't have hyper threading by default. And it, remember that hyper threading has no use for for audio in in most instances. Even now that we have like a 200 tracks template, so even though we're running a lot of voices, and that would suggest that the hyper threading would help here, it doesn't. And so yeah, that's. This goes to show how important where the bottleneck lies in some machines. Now I will um, close everything. We will unload everything from the master. And here we are with the slave machine testing. So here we have the latency monitor. As you can see when I'm moving the mouse. And there are some tests that I run in the background. And the values are pretty good. Uh, this machine is running. It's still running the ori original operating system that I put there. I mean, I think I upgraded that maybe around 2016. So it's a very old version of Windows. I don't even know where to find that in this version of Windows. So this is 1607, and here you can see the memory score. OCT benchmark and uh, most importantly the system latency the memory latency is 50 nanoseconds and I can go as low as 48 when nothing else is running and these are pretty good values even for a like 2016 system but yeah the, the point is that this CPU is not very powerful like the Cinebench score for this CPU is around 600 points but that doesn't make any difference for the audio performance. Uh, actually, after the tuning, this, this processor is performing better than the i7. I also decided to upgrade that because um, the 700 generation, 7000 generation has um, faster frequency scaling, I think. The feature is called speed shift, I think. So the CPU ramps up and goes down faster, much faster than the Skylake. And so I have actually have all the power saving features I've enabled because my working partner doesn't want to, to shut down the computer very often when he's working. So he can take a long, long time not working during the day, which is something I understand because it's very beautiful here in the Italian mountains. And so I decided to run everything with the C states, everything uh, enabled, and that doesn't cause any more issues with the dropping of voices. And I guess that's all for today. Thanks for, for listening and tuning in. Bye bye.